Hi everyone, it's possible. So if you know me, you'll probably know me for my SRB2 cup videos. And I just want to go down the basics of the game because obviously you're going to get people that want to play the game but can't because they don't know how. So with the options menu, you have the control setup. Now usually you'll use player one controls. I have my axe and right bound to W. I turn left bound to A, I turn right bound to D, my drifting bound to space, and my braking bound to S. This is basically the WISD control scheme. It's not the default. Using or throwing an item would be bound to Q or K, which is the alternate key for doing so. So essentially, I'd be able to keep driving and throw an item with Q. Of course, I use the upper arrow key and down arrow keys to aim either forward or backward respectively. And nobody uses a look backward key anyway, so... There's also tricks and secrets here, which might be able to be accessed by the F1 menu, but I'm not going to be bothering with that sort of thing. Obviously in race mode, the time is in the top right hand corner, the minimap is below it and the position is in the position is in the bottom right corner. If a player is nearby then you'll have a sort of check sign appear. This is based on what direction it is. So for example it might be next to the position counter if it's like if the pl nearby player is on the right side or something. Lap count is in the bottom left corner, rankings is above it and the item. The thing that displays your item, the item display is in the top left hand corner. Battle mode has a lot of the same things but the lap count is replaced with the bumper count and there's a wanted sign in the bottom right hand corner which basically gives you extra points for hitting the displayed player. For example this red sonic will get extra points for hitting the purple knuckles. Default gamepad controls, default keyboard controls, gameplay, item boxes grants you an item. Better ones given to those behind. These boost pads are Commonly marked by two arrows on a sort of metal plate thing. They boost you in the direction you are currently facing. These are bounce pads. Below the boost pads are bounce pads. They spring you high with full mobility. I believe yellow ones spring you not as high and they don't give you full mobility. Obviously a targeting reticule indicates that Jaws is targeting you, or rather you will be hit if you if a Jaws is launched at you. You can defend yourself with either bananas, orbeez or Jaws. If you have a mine behind you while a Jaws is chasing you, then that mine may or may not explode. And the egg boxes don't really do shit against defending. You can also just drive straight into the wall, rather drift and bounce off of the wall in order to get the jaws off your tail, but it's not exactly foolproof. Wrist sparks give you mini boost. Blue is weak. Blue gives you a weak mini boost. Red gives you a strong mini boost. And rainbow is the best mini boost. It's not even mentioned in the manual. For battle mode, bumpers are health. If you lose all your, of your health, you will be eliminated. This does not cover battle plus. Obviously there's a little display that can tell you an opponent's item. And for when you're eliminated, 
you can fill up a karma counter to rejoin the fray. If you attack as an SPV for karma, you can attack people as an SPV for karma and they'll lose a bumper. You can also protect people by giving them items. This gives you karma and this gives them good items. Items can often be thrown forward or backward and some of them will shield you until you fire again. Bananas spin out opponents and they block incoming threats. Egg bombs or egg boxes are fake items. Commonly you'd place these around item sets, although place them on corners is also quite good. This doesn't cover the egg panic mod. And this will plant a timed bomb on someone. Depending on whether or not the server has egg panic installed, you'll get either 5 seconds or 3 seconds. 3 seconds is vanilla. All these are straight shot things that cause knockback and spin people out. They bounce off walls. Jaws are sort of snipers of the game. You can lock onto people and shoot. They're homing missiles. And they're often quite shit for me to use, personally. They're even shitty if you're being chased by them. Mines are obviously mines. They're a timed explosion. And if people drive near to them, they'll explode. <laughs> These ones activate instantly on the fire. Sneakers give you a boost of speed, and they steal bumpers in battle. Of course you can also steal you can also steal bumpers if you use a starting boost on someone. Grow makes you grow large and run, run over opponents. It also allows you to go past your top speed. Thing is, it takes a bit of time for you to get out to top speed, rather. And it doesn't really work on the off-road. Invincibility is basically grow, but you can't run people over. You can, however, spin them out. And this actually works on the off-road. Thing is, I think you're locked to top speed. The ball hog allows you to basically shotgun five bouncy balls. You can bounce them off of walls, and you can often see someone probably cart themselves by accidentally firing them at a wall and getting hit by their own bullhog. Cued arrows allow you to pass through objects and off-road. They also allow you to steal opponents' items. There are a few items that are only limited to races and a few that are limited to battles. These activate instantly on fire. Rocket sneakers allow you to boost until the fuel runs out. If you mash the button then you will not boost faster. These are not golden mushrooms. The SPB, otherwise known as self-propelled bomb, allows you to blow up first. Of course, the SPB tends to trail behind first, so if the person in first can play perfectly, or rather well enough that the SPB does not catch up to them, then, you know, it won't really be able to hit first. Thunder Shield allows you to murder people with a thunderclap. It can be used for defence or offence, and it gets rid of bananas, egg boxes, and all of these, I think. And it's basically the only defense against the SPB. It also gets rid of jewels. Shrink allows you to shrink all the races ahead of you. And you can take advantage of items that get dropped by shrink. Springs, which are battle only, allow you to spring into the air to dodge people. You need to be mindful of what you land on. Also, you can get into places that other people can't get into. This is only present on certain maps because people are taking the time and the effort to go about implementing bounce pads on just about anything that you can get onto with the spring. 
these are general tips. Of course, this game should not be sold. And there is a link to the Kartku Discord in here.